And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the New Orleans Saints. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and ten. And it's a welcome back to hell for last year's number one pick. This is Dalvin Cook. Big Sheldon Rankins there to bring him down. These two teams, of course, met in the much dissected NFC Divisional Round game a season ago. And they also met in the Monday night opener last year. And Adrian Peterson's return to Minnesota. Gosh, that seems like a lifetime ago. It was actually Peterson's replacement, though, Dalvin Cook who went for 127 yards in a 29-19 Viking victory. On the ground, it's Cook. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Working out of the gun, Cousins. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Now it's Ginn. Oh, a nice spin. Oh, another spin. Hard to line him up when he does that. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Shotgun now for Breeze. And this is a catch by Ted Ginn. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there. And now it's third down at inches. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. They go play action here on first down. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. That'll bring up second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock the outfit away and bring up second down. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Breeze again here on second and 10. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Looking to go back to Thomas again, and it'll bring up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and 10. Yellow lady, 
Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he comes back with one complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Call it a gain of 10, and they pick up the first. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. On the crossing route, complete. That's Thomas. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Second down, Ingram. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. One of my favorite safeties in the league is Harrison Smith. His ability to support in the run game, as we just saw there, that's go, key, but also can cover deep as well. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Hey, we're waiting. To throw, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. On fourth down, off goes Drew Breeze. And on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This will be, let's see, 38 yards out. And Lutz's kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Minnesota ready to take back over the football here. And look back to week six, they got the win over Arizona. They weren't perfect in that game by any stretch, but bottom line, they're back over 500 now. And an interesting nugget, they got their first rushing touchdown of the season. And remember their head coach, Mike Zimmer, told all of us, let's not panic about our slow start. We were two and two last year before we elevated. Looks like they're on the same formula this year. One in Philadelphia last week, beat Arizona this week here. First rushing touchdown of the season. Mm -hmm. Latavius yeah. Murray getting it done. We had a big game, 155 yards and 24 carries. Dalvin Cook out with a bad hamstring. But how about Kirk Cousins' rushing touchdown? How about that? Forget the touchdown. Yeah. What, what was the dance what, afterwards? What, what was the dance, Kirk? I thought he was trying to go for the backpack at first, which yeah. is pretty popular out there. Yeah. But he slowed it down so much. And I loved how his offensive lineman, Mike Rimmers, came to celebrate. He started to do it, then he realized, yeah. I don't want to. I do noticed there were a lot of teammates that just avoided the area, <laughs> and that's what I would have done. Seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college. I was watching him on TV, called a scouting friend of mine and said, who is this guy? He's special. And he said, dude, you're watching a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State, their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. Now Cousins. And Rudolph has it left side. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. 
Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. Starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six yard line. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over a thousand yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think? A hundred yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. Breeze hands to Ingram. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Saints on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. Here it's third and three. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. Call it no game there, and it leads to a fourth down. I apologize in advance, Parker, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Here's Sherrill's. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Vikings will take over here, first and 10. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. They were forced to punt last time. Now I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Back to the ground, this time Cook. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Demario Davis there on the stop. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Here's Cousins. He's going to look deep down the field. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. 
That's a big time pitch and catch right there. And partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. Back now with Charles Davis on Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. And they've got it here with a first down. They'll run with Cook, and he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there, and if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And that is incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down, threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary, incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. Dan Bailey now for the field goal try. Less than an extra point attempt here. This is an 18-yarder. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will tie us at 3-3. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong line of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. The dangerous hill now to return. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Breeze will try again on second down. And bulldozing his way through. Caught on the left side by Ginn. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first down, Breeze toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Cameron Meredith, the intended target, and it's second down. Well, this gives us a chance to look ahead to some big week seven games upcoming. New England, Chicago, that's intriguing. Carolina and Philly, you have that game. And then how about Dallas and Washington? They're a combined six and five, but they're playing for first place in the NFC East. And just think, Dallas and Washington fans, when they have children, the first words they teach them are, we hate 
that rival team. <laughs> and now they're going to get after for first place in the East. The records aren't great, but the rivalry is strong. New England, Chicago. Chicago let one get away last week against Miami, but still they have high hopes in the NFC North, and they get to test their medal against a perennial champion, the New England Patriots. And Carolina, Philly. Carolina had a tough one in Washington last week. Philadelphia, big win last Thursday against New York, against New York Giants in New York. That's a big, big ball game for both of them. And this is going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Cook fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Second and nine now from the 21. On second down, Cook, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third down and 12. Cousins. And that is incomplete. The linebacker, Demario Davis, got a hand in to break that one up. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Whoosh. Oh, he did it again. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? He's got a man open. It's Cameron Meredith. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Throwing on second down. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. The Saints on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. 
From the gun, it's Breeze. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Andrew Sandejo. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. Well, let's take a step back and look league-wide here, Charles. What contender do you think is in the most trouble through six weeks? I would not have thought Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago, but, boy, very flat performances against KC and Dallas. Yeah, and we expect them to be a dominant team on the defensive side of the ball week in and week out, and Dallas just shredded them in their game on Sunday. But I don't think Jacksonville's in as much trouble as maybe Denver is. Denver's 2-4. and four. Four straight losses, and Kansas City setting a heck of a pace in the AFC West. Vance Joseph, the second-year coach in Denver, many thought he wouldn't return after last year. Got a second opportunity. This isn't helping him. And last but not least, if we're talking about this group of people, how about the Atlanta Falcons? They're also 2-4, and four, but they got a much-needed win against Tampa Bay on Sunday. If we knew they could get their defensive players back, I'd like them a lot more. They've got a tough road ahead of them, but Matt Ryan, he can help equalize things out. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here we go now. Now it's the backup Simeon. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Ken Crawley. And he will bring this across midfield to the 49-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Alvin Kamara really settling into the league in his second season. And, of course, he came out of Tennessee, but not a lot of people remember he started at Alabama. He did and got caught in that big mix of running backs at Bama. And they like those bigger, thicker runners, those guys who can break down defenses through the middle. Alvin Kamara ended up leaving Alabama. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Daniil Hunter. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Four there, four there. Hey, on second down, here's Breeze. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. The Saints on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and 19. Breeze now to throw. And oh, look at that, a diving catch. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. I know a retirement ceremony is a rocking chair is often one of the major gifts, but don't give this guy one just yet. He may be plus 30, but my goodness, how about that effort? Yeah, he's not that old. Hey, I'm on the wrong side of 32. You, you, you okay? You feeling all right? <laughs> I'll be all right. Okay, good. I just need some chocolate and a box of tissues. <laughs> And Lutz puts this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. 
It'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. He's got his man on the crossing route. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. A perfectly executed crossing route. On first and 10, Cousins. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Well, switching gears for a second, let's talk about all the offense that's been going on around the league. Yes, please. We've, let's do it. We've had three games where each team has scored 40 points. That didn't happen all of last year. And the most recent example, week six, that incredible 43-40 to 40 Pats win over the Chiefs. A lot of people talk about when you make rules changes or you emphasize certain things that you have unintended consequences. Let's not kid ourselves. This was the intended consequence open up offenses, more scoring. We're seeing that, and we're seeing it, and fans are loving it. Defensive coordinators are hating it, but fans are loving it. And how about Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, that New England-Kansas City game, big throw for big throw, touchdown for touchdown, and Brady guides him to a field goal to win it in the end. Yeah, the elder statesman, because Patrick Mahomes was just five years old when Tom Brady threw his first touchdown pass in the NFL. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Matt Wild now. He's been terrific so far. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, switching gears for a second, a, a neat moment before Pittsburgh's game last week. Everybody knows James Conner and how he dealt with cancer. 10-year-old in the crowd, Charles, had a sign that he was holding, and this kid is also dealing with cancer. James Conner went over to him, met him, gave him a word of encouragement, and, and signed some things for him. That was really nice. Really cool, isn't it? Because James Conner understands what that young man's going through. I believe his name is Levi. Got his attention. They're kindred spirits. And James Conner also showed him by his play and being back out there Beat this, overcome it, and go out and live your life the way you want to live it. And he's living it in a big way in the NFL right now, having a terrific season. And over 100 yards again this past week. Yeah, what a great story and crucial catch month in the NFL. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. Over the middle complete. That's Carr. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Wait, wait. 
Throwing on first down is Breeze. Escaping the pressure right. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. second down looking middle and it's incomplete let's face it perfection is something we all chase whether it's playing this game or whatever we do hard to attain but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete the Saints on third down they've converted three times in eight chances this is third and ten to throw is Breeze and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Sherrill's to return it. 12 yards on the return that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They run, cook, and he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Second and six, just inside the 30. So if you like field goals, this is your game. 6-3, three, three field goals at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. The return man is Hill. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Throwing now is Breeze. That he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. The Saints on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and nine. Here's Breeze. It's brought in right side by Ginn. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. 
They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. That, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. To throw, Cousins. And he's taken down here by the Saints. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Look at the spin. Balance. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll try to get the ground game going with Ingram. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Ready, ready. Shotgun now for Breeze. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Here we go. Ready. Ready. They go play action here on first down. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is he to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Breeze on the draw, gives to Kamara. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. 
But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This time it's third and three. Now Breeze. That's caught. It's Thomas. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. Now Breeze. Got a man open. It's Thomas. It's a touchdown for New Orleans. Michael Thomas there to make the grab. And the Saints now add six to their lead. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. Lutz now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. To throw is Cousins. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. In on the tackle, Alex Okafor. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On third down, Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. That was second down run for Murray. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. A first down throw for Cousins. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and now it's second down. Just work with me a second here, because in my lifetime, 
seeing how quarterback percentages have changed in throwing the football. I mean, back in the good old days, if you were around 50%, you were doing okay. But now, you need to be 65 to 70% to be considered an elite quarterback. And in this ball game, it feels like we're playing old school, right around 50%. Yeah, he's under 50%. He needs to start hitting more targets. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Cousins from the gun on third. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. It's a gain of five. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Here's Matt Wild now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 20. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Ingram again. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Ready, you ready? Now Breeze on third down. And Gins got it. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. Here's Breeze to throw. He gets it to Thomas. A very good move, but for a short gain out near the 32. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Saints. They'll be looking to expand their lead here. They've got the football as we start the fourth. On second down, Camara. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that's going to bring up a third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. 
Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Throwing again, Cousins on second and 10. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And he'll be down deep into New Orleans territory. Play there, Cousins to Thielen, 62 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield, but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. From the red zone now, Cousins, and he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A give, this is Cook. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And it's incomplete, almost intercepted. He had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. It brings up fourth down. That was a dangerous throw towards the end zone. Boy, did it hang up there forever. Wanted to run up there and pull it down out of the sky. Yeah, it felt like it really should have been intercepted. Lucky to have that one back. You've got to be more careful when you're that close to the goal line. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13-6. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 24. Bree's going to throw. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Ready, ready. 
Breeze again here on second and 10. And his throw is incomplete. Trey Wayne's the Michigan State man right there in coverage. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And it's hauled in by Ben Watson. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And now out comes Minnesota. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with it. <laughs> and the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Alex Okafor able to drop him for a loss of four. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. So after the sack here, second and 14. Working out of the gun, Cousins. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The Vikings on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big time completion. Cousins now 10 of 17 throwing the ball. He's got a first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Cousins again. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. And he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners, who've had the receivers on lockdown. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout as there's a Saints player down here on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Yeah, the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. Ready. 
Shotgun now for Breeze. Thomas has got it, complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now a play fake here on first down. Trying to lay one up deep. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. On second down, here's Breeze. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. A very solid gain of 27. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on a return. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter, turning it over, now the door. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. The Saints say they have it, and they do. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Tackle made by Everson Griffin. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. They go play action here on first down. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Everson Griffin. In there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> so now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Ready. From the gun, it's Breeze. And his throw's going to be incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Four down, four down. Three. Three. To throw, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. 
How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, you had your fun? All yeah, right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Throwing, Cousins, and complete. Right side, the tight end, Rudolph. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here's Cousins. Caught on the right side by Treadwell. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The battle in the trench is never more important than right now. This is third and in inches. And off comes to Cook. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. The best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments. And right now, I think this team needs to open things up. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Four down, four down, check, four down, four down. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. He'll look to throw. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It'll be a gain of six, and it's a second down. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Ken Crawley. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Ready. Breeze gives it up to Ingram, and he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Another timeout called by the Vikings now, as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Carry for the workhorse tonight, Ingram. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense as it comes with a minute 15 left to go in the second half. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. Shifts by him. So possession goes over here on the punt. 
And out now come the Vikings. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Back to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and they're going to have a third down. Back to throw. Oh, some strong running. Open man is stealing. It's complete. 18 yards there and a first down. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. He's back to throw. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 23 yards on the play. Now he'll spike it here with 20 seconds to go on the clock. And that one drops to the ground, incomplete. Clock stops here just inside of 20 seconds, 19 left. Cousins. And he's got some space here. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. And they are able to spike it, cutting it close, but two seconds left on the clock. And it's incomplete, but there is still two seconds left in this ball game. So they'll have one final shot. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. One last shot now for Cousins. And it's caught. It's a touchdown with zeros on the clock. And an extra point will send us to OT. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Bailey got the extra point, and that will tie things up at 13. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10. First down, here's Cousins. He's gonna flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. It's his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about, in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down, a nice safe throw, and a good one. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. 
They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Here comes a big one now in overtime. This is third and inches. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? So from the 36 now, first and 10. Cousins on first down. Going deep for Diggs. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Von Bell. And it's a good return here as he'll get all the way up close to the 35. A costly mistake here at OT. And you know what they say when you throw an interception like that in overtime? You don't usually get a chance to throw a second one. I mean, I'm not sure the analytics on it. Let's ask Marvin, our statistician, to, to ring that down for us. That's typically how coaches and teams feel about it. If you throw one, you likely cost yourself the game. And that was a really nice play to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard game. What can Breeze do now with his drive? And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now Breeze. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the pro bowler, Anthony Barr. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. So we will see yet another drive in this overtime. For whatever reason, neither team able to finish this game off. I know that the first thought is, does anyone really want to win it? But I think that they both desperately want to win it, and sometimes you force things, and that leads to errors. Well, it's out there for the taking. We'll see who can do it. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. A handoff, it's Murray. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. But that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? Now Cook. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. And a loss of three to bring up four. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Here's Matt Wild now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Neither team scored yet. Now we go to sudden death. Next points win this game. How about the tension right now? It is ratcheted up, isn't it? I mean, now whatever happens, points are scored. That's your ball game. Can't wait to see the defense now. Do they get a little more aggressive in order to not let the team just drive the ball easily down the field? Got to be careful, though, right? Yeah, if you're too aggressive, you just give up something easy and cheap. But some defensive coordinators, they'd rather take a stand that way as opposed to being nickel and dime down the field. It's Everson Griffin who made the tackle. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Right. 
Breeze to throw on second down. Gets it to Meredith complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Backed up deep in their own territory, they were in search of a cushion, and the cushion was found. And you have to think total game, even in overtime. As a head coach, field position still counts in this spot. So they had to get out from the shadow of their own goal line, get themselves some breathing room. Obviously, that helps them on offense, but it may help their defense, too. Might be necessary here in OT. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Gets through, and now an opening. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Ready. You ready? Ready, sir. Again, it's Kamara, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. And Anthony Barr just has it all, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of physique, athletic ability, and now he's versatile as well. When he came out of UCLA, he played outside linebacker, but also down defensive end. The Vikings can utilize those same sort of skills. Now Breeze on third down. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Here we go. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Ingram. They get the penalty yardage back plus a yard. Six-yard gain, and it's second and nine. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Breeze hands to Ingram. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So it all rests now on the right leg of Will Lutz. This to win it in overtime. And another timeout called by the Vikings now. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So it all rests now on the right leg of Will Lutz. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. 
we were just treated to an absolute dandy in this one. A great finish in overtime with a long field goal. Everybody, including us, on the edge of their seats. Quite a game. And it's rare that you get a game into overtime that it doesn't turn out to be a dandy, right? That's what we saw here. And just what you were talking about, a long field goal to win it. So definitely not a gimme. So there was tension all the way through until the ball went through the post. But it did go through the post. Ice water was in his veins. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been